The beginning of the movie shows us newspaper headlines about a serial killer surgeon. The person has been accused of a dozen botched surgeries and sadistic killings in California, but hasn't been caught. Somewhere else, the same maniac surgeon brings one of his victims in front of the mirror. The woman yells in horror while looking at what the man has done to her face. In the following scene, a beauty blogger from California named Alexa Landry is on a hospital bed, ready to get Botox on her face to make her look younger. At the last minute, she gets nervous and stops the doctor claiming she is just not ready for the procedure yet. After that, she goes home to her boyfriend, Matt. She and Matt are not on good terms because of his drinking habits. He accuses Alexa of cheating on him just because she returned home early from the doctors. As the two argue, Alexa's mom calls her informing her that her sister Becca has run away from rehab again. Alexa quickly rushes to the place she knows Becca will be at. Becca reveals that she was abused at rehab, but the people thought she made it up because she wanted to get out. Alexa sympathizes with her and hugs the poor girl. In the following scene, we see Alexa's friend Trinity wake up beside her boyfriend Calvin. She goes to the bathroom where Calvin joins her. A while later, someone knocks on their door. Calvin's friend Kenny, who is sleeping on the couch, opens the door for Matt, Becca, and Alexa. Kenny tries to flirt with Becca, only to be ignored. Calvin has invited the three of them to listen to Trinity's new single that she has yet to release. He hypes the song up and asks Trinity to bring his laptop down so they can listen to it. However, they soon realize the laptop is missing. Calvin blames Kenny for losing it since he was supposed to bring it home the previous day. Kenny defends himself saying it's in the car, but they find the trunk empty as well. Since the laptop and the phone are linked, they find out its location. It turns out the laptop is in a neighborhood far away from their place. A confused Calvin asks Kenny to go get it since he was the one who lost it. Kenny agrees and drives away to the location. In the evening, Kenny reaches the location and sees the laptop is inside a house. He knocks on the door and an old lady kindly invites him in. But as they come inside, she starts talking to herself. The woman then orders Kenny to have some of her homemade brownies and ignores him completely when he asks her about the laptop. A scared Kenny takes a bite from the brownie without thinking much about it. Seeing that the woman isn't going to help him, Kenny takes matters into his own hands and goes around the house looking for the laptop. Eventually, he enters a room with several pieces of clothing all on the floor. It also has two laptops, but none of them are Calvin's. Just then, a little kid named Timothy appears at the door with Calvin's laptop. The kid asks Kenny if he wants to play with him and runs away. Kenny follows behind him and ends up in the house's basement. The place is creepy and leads to a dark room. He carefully enters the room and sees a hospital bed and several jars on the shelves. To his horror, the jars contain human organs. Then, he notices a woman with a distorted face inside a cage. Shocked, he tries to get her out, but suddenly, a tall man appears behind him and knocks him out. Back at Calvin's house, they start getting worried for Kenny. Calvin and Trinity want to go look for him, and Matt and Alexa join them. Not wanting to leave her sister alone, Alexa also brings Becca with her. The group of five finally reach the house. They feel something is off and decide to leave Becca in the car to call the cops if the others don't return in 10 minutes. The group then knocks on the door and is received by the old woman. She calls them inside, mistaking them for her son Jean's friends. Calvin clarifies that they are there for Kenny in the laptop. Just then, the woman's son, Dr. Jean, appears at the front door and asks them what is wrong. Calvin threatens to call the cops if he doesn't return the laptop and their friend. Jean keeps calm and tells them that Kenny is in the washroom. He even invites them in because it is too cold outside. The group sees no harm in going in for a few minutes, so they enter the house. The girls go to the washroom while Jean offers the guys some scotch. Calvin is impressed by the doctor's choice in alcohol. Meanwhile, Becca gets bored in the car and takes pills to entertain herself. All of a sudden, the trunk opens on its own. She gets out to check what is wrong and is startled to see Timothy sitting on the trunk. The kid notices Becca's self-harm marks on her wrist and claims that he too likes to cut people to make them beautiful. Becca asks him to go back in his house, but Timothy doesn't listen. Instead, 
he tells her about someone named Philip. Becca turns around to see the tall guy from earlier. Back inside the house, the old woman prepares dinner for everyone, including Calvin and his friends. Dr. Jean drinks with them and insists they stay a little longer. Matt starts to get annoyed and threatens the doctor to get Kenny from the bathroom quickly. The doctor agrees and goes to the other room. He returns a few seconds later and says he has bad news. Everyone listens to him in confusion as he explains how his son doesn't have the same history and medical training as him, so he makes mistakes sometimes. The doctor finally brings Kenny out in a wheelchair. The group screams in horror when they see Kenny's dead body. It turns out that the bad news the doctor was talking about was his son Philip accidentally killing Kenny while performing sadistic surgeries on him. The psychotic doctor apologizes to the stunned group, claiming that their surgeries will be successful, unlike Kenny's. Calvin attacks the doctor, but is knocked out by Philip. Next, Matt tries to fight him, but falls down immediately. The doctor reveals that he had drugged the alcohol they drank earlier. Soon, the girls fall unconscious as well. The doctor then asks Philip to prepare Calvin for surgery. In the following scene, we see Becca tied to a hospital bed and gag. The doctor and Philip approach her excitedly, claiming that they will turn her beautiful. Dr. Jean apologizes for not having access to anesthesia and warns Becca that the procedure might hurt a bit. Meanwhile, Calvin wakes up in a bathtub filled with ice. He has bruises all over his face and cannot feel his body. He has a hard time standing, but somehow drags himself out of the tub only to reveal that both of his feet have been cut off. He cries in horror while looking at his legs, but still doesn't give up. He somehow manages to crawl out to the hallway. At the same time, Trinity wakes up tied to a chair and gag. She tries to free herself, but is unsuccessful. Behind her are Matt and Alexa in the same condition. She tries calling them, but instead, attracts Timothy. The kid asks Trinity if she wants to play with him and repeats the question in a foreign language. She accepts the offer and signals him to free her. The boy tries to uncover hands, but when he can't, he runs away to get help. Next, we see Calvin still trying to reach the entrance while crawling on the floor. The old woman notices him and asks if he would like some brownies. Just then, the doctor finds him and drags him away claiming it is time for his procedure. Philip also brings Trinity out in a wheelchair while she whimpers in fear. He takes her to the basement where the doctor apologizes because he will have to keep her waiting. He then moves her closer to Calvin so she can see him performing the horrifying procedures on him. The doctor also reveals Becca's body inside a glass cell. He has given her cuts all over her body, citing that the cuts she gave herself weren't enough. Now he starts to cut Calvin's eyelids out so he can see better while a horrified Trinity watches them. He also cuts off his bottom lip for him to breathe properly. At the same time, Alexa and Matt wake up tied to a bed. They panic and try to move, but aren't successful. Just then, Timothy appears out of nowhere, asking Alexa to play with him. Alexa calmly tells the kid that she will even be his best friend if she lets the two of them out of there. But Timothy elects to free only Alexa and play with her. He unties her hands and takes her downstairs, all while hiding from his family. She finally reaches the main entrance and hugs Timothy to say thank you. Alexa finally gets out of the house, looking for Becca in their car. But she is met with disappointment when she sees that Becca and the car keys are gone. She then goes running around the neighborhood, hoping someone would hear her. Meanwhile, the doctor asks Philip to check on the other couple. Philip goes to the room and is surprised to see only Matt on the bed. He quickly tells the doctor and they set out to look for Alexa. Before they can get to her, Alexa finds a car on the road. Inside is a stranger named Mercia. She asks Mercia for her phone, but the woman says she doesn't have one. Instead, she offers to drive Alexa to the police station. Alexa believes her and gets in the car unknown to what her true intentions are. She even tells the stranger everything about Kenny's death and the psycho doctor. However, Alexa soon realizes that Mercia is taking her back to the neighborhood she came from. She tries to tell her to go the other way, but the woman stabs her with an injection and makes her unconscious. 
Back in the house, Philip comes to sedate Matt, but is knocked out by him. Matt unties the ropes around his wrists and carefully walks outside. A while later, he hides under a bed where the doctor puts Becca's limp body. Thankfully, she is still alive, so Matt unties her as well. Mercia enters the house and greets the old lady. It turns out that she is the doctor's sister and is a psychopath like him. Becca and Matt hide from them and walk to the basement to save the others. They untie Trinity from the bed and are about to run away, but Philip attacks Matt and hurts him gravely. Becca hides behind the shelves in fear while the doctor slits Trinity's throat and kills her. Philip then brings Alexa in, in a wheelchair. The doctor had performed surgeries on her face to accentuate her features. Now the only ones alive are Becca, Alexa, and Matt. The doctor puts Matt on a hospital bed and amputates his arm. Becca gathers all her courage and attacks Philip, stabbing his eye. But in turn, she is choked and killed by the doctor. Taking the opportunity, Alexa stabs the doctor using a scalpel and runs away again. She comes across Mercia and kills her as well. At last, she gets out of the house and stops a car with a couple inside. They help her get inside the car and are about to leave, but the doctor, who had followed Alexa out, stops them. He attacks and knocks out the man and sedates the woman as well. Alexa somehow manages to drive away in the car while the doctor takes the strangers with him for his next project. A while later, Alexa notices that Timothy is in the back seat. He asks her if they can play together now. Alexa accepts the offer and drives away with the kid. The movie ends as the doctor begins a new procedure on a woman. Thanks for watching, guys.